this month, I have been blessed. I don't know about you. You know, everything that was said to us this month really uplifted up on the part of standing in the gap for each other. For this morning's devotion, we're going to be having a, a Sister Tswane Matole. She has been blessing us throughout the month and I know she's going to continue to bless us even today. So I am presenting to you this morning, Sister Tswane Matole. Sister Tswane, this is your time. Bless us. We're already prepared to hear what God has given to you to give over to us. Open the mic and, 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 and bless us, Sister Tswane. Good morning, um, Mama Lulu Makapela, and good morning to the sisters and the brothers that are with us this morning. We glorify the Lord for waking us up. Um, we do not have the art of waking ourselves up, even though we do it every morning, we don't have it. And we are grateful that the giver of life wakes us up because he still has another purpose for us to accomplish in the day. We continue this morning together, studying around the virtuous woman. And the title of our message this morning is, It Shall Be Rebuilt. It shall be rebuilt. And we read together from the book of Jewel, a text that many of us know, the book of Jewel chapter two, and we read verse 25 to 26. And it says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar. says, and, and I will restore to you, let's focus. I will restore to you, the word restore, the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, the great army which I sent amongst you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed, says the Lord. I pray that this will, the Lord will take these words and again give them life to us. Because many of us are in need of this encouragement from the Lord to say, Lord, I know. I know, Lord, that that which I've lost you will make good. It may not come back in the same form, but I know that Lord, you are God and faith. You are your God true and faithful. I pray that the Lord through his Holy Spirit will bless these words in us. Now, as we reflect on us, you realize that the, the prophet that the Lord reveals this text to, um, you know, uses an analogy we've been studying last week which is the analogy of one who plants. And somebody who's in the field, the Lord decides to target this message as people who are, or use the analogy of people who are planters, who are in the field. You know, the message is targeted at that woman and that man who has been out there. But despite the industry of sowing, you know, the seed, the industry of just being busy, the locust have come and the locust has devoured the harvest. You know, desire devouring within the context that we're talking about, it's not just, you know, having, you know, plants or seeds just taken um, just for one season or just having one part of the crop destroyed. You know, but in this story, in this context that the, the, the prophet Joel, the Lord gives him a revelation, it is a context where, you know, not only is it a loss of the harvest in one year, but it is a loss that has been rolling, you know, where there's been rolling losses, when there has been damage and pain year upon year from the palmer worm, that locust, that canker women, that caterpillar, you know, in Kenya last year, in 2020, they experienced what the swarming locusts can do. 
They come in not as one or two, but as a massive swarm of desert locusts, resembling a dark cloud descending. On the ground, planters do nothing, can do nothing but watch in horror as their fields are being decimated. The one thing they can do is pray, but their hands are limited. I don't know if you've had a situation coming at you where you have, you have nothing but prayer left just to pray as this cloud descends. Now, as if this was not enough, it says what the swarming locusts had eaten and left behind, the canker worm, which is calling the, lip, the leaking locust, it would come and lick over that which the swarming locusts have, have, have left behind. And, 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 and what, what do you think that, okay, fine, there was, there was the swarming locust and there was the leaking locust. Hi, it is enough. No. Then the caterpillars eat up what the canker worm left behind. It's as though the swarming locust comes and it leaves its eggs and its offspring behind and the offspring just come and, and, and they just devour. Even the caterpillars are coming to finish off. And then the palmer worm just comes and finishes up. You know, leaving behind a trail of economic, emotional, ment and mental trauma and anguish. You know, as I read this text, I'm reminded of Naomi. You see, Naomi leaves her home in Bethlehem, Judah, with her husband and her two sons because of the famine in her land. And as she leaves Bethlehem, Judah, it's as though the first swarm of locusts comes after her. You know, they, they had had a land. They had, you know, when, when Naomi and her husband left their home in Bethlehem, they had, they had land. But famine approaches them and approaches their people, and they are, they are forced to leave a home, a family, to leave friends. And I am sure for them it must have been very traumatic to have to go and uproot, uproot and leave everything that you know. And there are many on our continent and probably some on the call who, like Naomi, had to leave home because of poor conditions, of hunger, joblessness and distress in their homelands, leaving many loved ones behind. I know leaving loved ones is never an, an easy thing. And so she leaves because her, her circumstances have changed and she has to. She comes into the foreign land of Moab to a people that held a bitter grudge against the children of Israel for occupying their land. She, she was not going to a, to a nation that was ready and willing to receive them. I'm sure whilst Naomi and her husband and her family came in peace to the land of Moab, looking for greener pastures, there were many in the land of Moab who probably looked at them with suspicion as foreigners and who treated them with disdain and with as unwanted visitors. But I thought, you, I'm thinking, maybe Naomi said to herself, you know, I will enjoy this for as long as my husband and my family are with me. I will enjoy this. But oh, lo and behold, the next trage tragedy struck her. Her husband died in that foreign land. Away from her traditional support system, away from her culture, away from her people, knowing how she mourned at home, she didn't have that luxury. She mourned with her children in a strange land. When her sons married, she was probably excited and said, who but who? These locusts have been at me. These, these locusts have been at me, but who oh, my children are marrying? And they're marrying. Here's this daughter-in-law, Ruth, an amazing, amazing woman. Here's Ofra. At least I am no longer alone. At least my family is growing. Oh, yes, but no tragedy was still there. The seed, the, 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 that, that seed of, of, of the swarming locusts was still bringing in lots of distraction. And so she sees the death of her two sons in that land. You see, to Naomi, in old age, it in her old age, it felt like the locusts had mercilessly destroyed what she had sowed and planted over the years. She was a woman of virtue. But somehow at this point, when she looks at her life, it seems as though, wow, 
you know, the pain, the anguish. You see, at times life and stuff happens, even to virtuous women. In her grief, Naomi felt that the hand of the Lord has gone out against her. She actually says that with, with her mouth. You know, yesterday I was talking to a friend, you know, who says to me, when her mother was sick, she prayed earnestly for her life to be spared. But when her mother died, after she had prayed, for a month thereafter, she could not pray. And I'm sure there are many who we know that we are standing in the gap for, and maybe some who are amongst us who are not talking, who are in that state of wrestling with God and saying, but Lord, like this. And, and so, you know, this friend of mine says, you know, she, for a month she couldn't pray, but until she realized that, you know, the Lord was with them even as they were going through their pain. You see, when Naomi went back home, people asked her, is this Naomi? So I think maybe her age and the heavy struggles of life had even changed her look. There's somehow where, where sadness and pain can get to even how we look and how we come out. She, her appearance was maybe different and the people ask, are you Naomi? Her name meaning pleasant. And, and she answers, looking back at her life experiences, the loss of her loved ones, you know, her losses one after the other, the loss of house, the loss of home, the loss of stability, the loss of relationships, the loss of comfort. She felt that the Almighty had dealt her very bitterly. Perhaps as a woman who quietly feels this way, like no woman this morning, maybe to, you know, the, maybe to somebody, they may appear proper and, and just voicing it in, I, you know, just sitting in there with that disappointment and turn of events, deep down, maybe feeling that they have been dealt a bitter set of cards. Another person may barely be standing because after a wave of challenges year after year, like job, it feels like there is some form of crisis after another, a crisis dealing with money, a crisis then with children, then a crisis with parents who are sick, a crisis then with friendships that are taking the wrong turn, issues in the church and somehow you find yourself in the middle of them. And as you think, think maybe you think things are getting better of at work and then the space spins out of control. You have a miserable boss, and, and marriage challenges somehow evolve in your home. And then of course, COVID challenges come and it changes the world as you knew it. And to some extent, the world is no longer what you thought it was. This was the lot of Ruth, of Naomi. Today's message is that this is not the end of you. Like it was not the end of Naomi, it is not the end of you. You see, Naomi thought she was done when her husband and her children died. But Elroy, the God who sees me, the God who sees you, still had a plan to prosper her. The one who puts the solitude in families. I love that, that God sees us in our loneliness. God sees us in our want, in our despair. And somehow he puts us in places that will warm us. He puts us in a, with you in a circle with friends and he surrounds you with fire. And so God saw Naomi's destitute position and the Lord surrounded her with a fire, with his fire of his Holy Spirit and the fire that he put in a woman called Ruth. God saw her and put her in the midst of a Boaz. And, you know, I love the fact that the Lord saw her need and said he would give her a daughter and in law who loved her and who was better to her than seven sons. So whatever you have lost, I pray that the Lord will give you the seven portion. You know, Naomi um, ultimately received the gift of a restorer of her life, the nourisher of her old age through Obed, who was born to her daughter-in-law. I pray that the Lord may, 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 may give you a restorer of life, give you a support if you feel alone and weak. 
I, I ask that the Lord may nourish you when you as we are weak so that you can mount up on wings like eels. That when you feel weary, you may regain the strength of, of that eagle that's tired and, and that eagle that has to pluck out all its feathers but still go up, still go up. May you still go up in prayer, go up in prayer and in that place find a new one. You see the promise that God makes to those who trust him, who call upon him with a sincere heart is that he will not abandon you. He will not abandon me. He will not leave us, nor will he forsake us. Deliverance is of the Lord, and his deliverance will be wondrous. You see, in the text we read, it talks about how the Lord will deliver wondrously. It means that the way he will deliver will be miraculous. It will cause wonder. You yourself will be surprised at the intervention that God brings. You see, the intervention that God brought into Naomi's life was more than just being, you know, taking away her solitude. The Lord will use her pain to go get Ruth so that she could birth an Obed, an Obed who would birth a Jesse, a Jesse who would birth a David, David who would be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Whatever your experiences, even those are not lost because that which was intended for your destruction yet the Lord will use for his glorification. You see, the Lord will restore the years that the locust has eaten. He is not going to restore just parts of it. He, will, he says he's not going to restore the year that the locust has eaten or the day that the locust has eaten or the month, but all the years. Because at times when you look at them, it feels like it is so much. The operative word from God, he says, he will. Not might, not may or can or could, but a definitive, I will restore. Like Job, the time you feel you have lost, the relationships you have lost, the possessions you have lost, the sovereign Lord says, he will respond. He will make up at the appointed time. He may not give it back to you the way it was. He may not give you the same people that you lost, but to Job, he gave others. That, that, the, the memories you may not replace, but the Lord promises you that he will give you new memories. New memories that will bring you new smiles, new laughter. So as I close, the message says, do not give up sowing the seed of faith of hope, of love, of patience and kindness. Naomi did not. Because God who never lies promises that you shall eat in plenty. Don't stop sowing because if you sow, how shall you eat in plenty? Stay on your knees and stay praying because he says you shall eat in plenty. You shall be satisfied. He will heal your land. Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, slain from the foundations of the world, will arise with healing in his wings to, who, to heal the wounded, broken spirits, to save by his grace. The Holy Spirit will rain showers of blessings because showers of blessings we need. The Holy Spirit will rain those blessings in your home such that there will not be room to receive it. And you shall become a lender of many. The Lord himself will give you a crown of beauty for the ashes you have been in. The oil of rejoicing for the tears in the morning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that spirit of depression. The Lord, you know, will do this so that you may be called a tree of righteousness so that others may see this, this tree arise and say, indeed, God is good, that others may come and find shelter under the tree, which is you. That others may say, this indeed is the planting of the Lord, that the, the Lord himself might be glorified and that his name may be praised. We may be hard pressed on every side now, but we are not crushed. Perplexed, yes but not in despair because we rest, rest on this assurance, this unassailable promise by the Lord that those who are called by his name 
who call unto him with a contrite and a broken spirit, who call on him out of a sincere heart, will never, underline the word, never be ashamed. Victory is certain, and most surely it shall be rebuilt. That which you have lost, it shall be rebuilt. This is the word of the Lord, and glory be the name of the Lord. Can we pray? Our Father, I, I know you, you see our hearts, you, you see us, you see our secret places. You see the tears of many. You see our anguish. You see our anxious moments. And you see our brokenness. I thank you that you're a God who sees. I thank you, Lord, that as women, as when we are in the desert, running away from whatever our situations, when we, we fall on, we fall on the ground and we call to you that you're a God who sees. And so, Father, I pray for your children on this call. I ask that, Lord, make these words alive to them. The promise that you have made to us today, I pray that may it come alive. I pray that may you restore the years that the locusts have eaten. I pray that, Lord, that which the kankawem came to finish off and the caterpillars and, you know, all of those worms, I pray that, Father, may you restore them. I pray that, Lord, you'll bring back rejoicing. I pray that you will give them a testimony that others may behold and be reminded that we serve a God who's still in the business of answering prayers and that you are not a God who abandons your children. I pray this in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, relying only on his blood because I am but a man, a woman who is weak. But Lord, I come in the name of Jesus. I apply the blood of Christ over our lives. And I ask that, Lord, may the Holy Spirit take this prayer to interpret it in groanings and utterings that only heaven can hear. And here when this is done, I ask that shower your blessings on your children. Shower your blessings upon your children in Christ Jesus. I pray, amen.